Hey guys, Captain Grim here, coming back with another 911 behind the scenes video for you guys. Now, this is going to be part two. Now, this one I'm going to talk about the differences between a larger agency and a smaller agency, and some questions that you guys have asked, or uh, other things that I think you guys need to know um, that's been brought to my attention. So, to begin with, the differences between a larger agency and a smaller agency. Now, the small one I work at, there's four of us working per shift. We work 12 hour shifts. Uh, four people on each shift, four different shifts, so there's 16 of us total. Now, when I worked at this larger agency, there was over, a, uh, I think it was like 160 of us. We worked eight-hour shifts there, so there was a first shift, second shift, and third shift. My shift went from 10.45 at night till 6.45 in the morning. And um, now the way it all worked there, you started off as a call taker and that's all you did was answer the phones you know at the smaller agency like i talked about we we rotate every night on what what our job is um whether we're answering phones working the county radio working one of the city's radios but there you, you start off as a call taker and it's a long training process you got to go through um and then on each shift like on my night shift there was oh gosh there was maybe uh 40 of us so versus the four of us working at where I work now, there was like 40 of us working. So at any point in time, you know, whereas I, where I work now, there's only one of us answering the phone at any point in time. Now, all four of us can if need be, but it's solely the, the one call taker's job to answer the phone. There, they would have anywhere from eight to 32 people answering the phones, depending on if it was a holiday in a busier time or in the winter when it was slower. You know, it just, it just kind of depended. Um, and so then you have those people, then you have another section that's nothing but an EMS dispatcher. That's all they do. They don't answer the phone. They don't answer any of the radios or stuff. They just strictly handle the EMS calls for the whole County. Then you have a city, um, dispatcher and that's for the, the whole big city there in the County. And then you have a County, uh, fire dispatcher, which he handles the smaller cities and all of the county fire departments, and that's all they do. And then you have one person that uh, relieves them if they need to go to the bathroom, or whatever they take it over. Then on the police side, whereas for one of our cities, you know, we have two of our cities on one radio, and in the bigger city, um, we have just one person working it. Well, the city in the larger county is split up between three dispatchers. There's a um, Adam, uh, Adam squad, Baker squad, Charlie squad. It's divided up that way. And that's, that's the way the whole, the, the, they are in charge of the whole city. Then you got one person that relieves them. The county split up between, uh, two different people. There's a West side and an East side, and then they have their own relief. Um, and then there's one that, uh, dispatches for a lot of the, uh, smaller cities. They handle all them. And then, whereas um, at our agency, whenever an officer does a traffic stop and runs a tag or checks somebody for warrants or checks their driver's license, stuff like that, uh, we run all that on the same radio that we dispatch the calls on. At a larger agency, they just dispatch the calls and handle all that from one radio. Then the officers have to switch over to another channel called Info Channel, which that was another job you could work in there, and you would run all the stuff for that. you call the wreckers and and do any um, looking up phone numbers or finding addresses, doing any of the, the little stuff like that for the officers would all be handled on that radio. Whereas at my agency that I'm looking at now, it's all handled by that same dispatcher. They don't have that and then there was another person whose sole job was the NCIC part of it, like entering in warrants, entering in cell and stuff and everything. We all four split that between us uh, at mine. And so it was just it was just a whole different piece. Like the amount of calls and stuff, like the amount of calls we would get on night shift there in one night is still more calls than we get for an entire week on all shifts at the agency I work at now. Now, if there's like a, a, a power outage or a bad storm or something like that, our phones blow off the hook at the smaller agency. They, they were always on the hook at the level. Population difference. It's insane. Because I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say who I, where, who I work for and everything else, but, uh, 
the, the larger city is one of the larger cities um, in the state I live in. And so it's it's got a large large population in that county. Now some of the other questions that have been brought to my attention, one of them is um, if you live in like a gated community or you're a part of the door or has a code, if, if let's say officers or EMS or somebody needed to get to you and they had to enter a code to be able to get to you or one of your family members or anything like that, they need to have code on file in dispatch and it needs to be an updated code. It's like this was brought to my attention by my parents. Um, parents Brother, friend, friend, parent, somebody uh, <clears throat> had this issue not too long ago where they tried to get in. They live in a gated community and they called EMS and EMS did not have an updated gate code and they could not get in until dispatch was able to. They finally got somebody to come down there and get the gate open, but because they didn't, that, that delayed them being able to get to them. So always make sure like your addresses are up to date. Um, it's easy to see your addresses. That is a big problem ambulances, police officers, everybody has is finding your address. Because, you know, GPS will only get you within so close. And, you know, if it's not displayed on your mailbox or displayed on your house, what number you are, the officer can't tell for sure if that's it or not. It usually comes down to then we have to go into the map and zoom in, which we don't always have updated the most updated map. And we have to describe what we can see on the map and hope that it matches what the officer's looking at. And then we can tell them, you know, that's it. And then usually when they get there, they have to run a 28 on one of the vehicles and see if the vehicle's registered to the address that they need to be at or if it's one there in the area. But all of that, you know, that's two to three minutes that is delaying the officer from getting to you that he could already be to you if, you know, you had that displayed and they knew... Oh, okay, that's 237 Sycamore Street, because I see it, you know, I see the two, th I'm on Sycamore Street, and there's a big old 237 across the side of their house, that, that's the house. You know, we don't have to go through all the other steps to do that, so always make sure all that's updated, your gate code's updated, and that you've got um, it displayed on your house, what your address is. Now, whenever, <clears throat> like at my agency or the other agency, how this always works, people call in, and they're always like, I need an officer, I need EMS now. And they keep saying now, and they get mad at me because I'm asking them questions. Now, the first thing I ask when I answer the phone is I say, hello, this is da-da-da-da-da, County 911. Where is your emergency? Like, well, I say, what is the location of your emergency? First thing I ask is the address. That's the first thing you need to give them when you call 911. You need to tell them where you're at. And, oh, I'm over here by yada yada's house is not a good enough answer we get so many people that tell us oh i'm next door to so-and-so's house okay i don't know who so-and-so is i even i don't even live in the county i don't live in the county for the agency i work for i live in a different county i drive there so i know a lot of the roads and stuff from working there but i don't know billy joe jim bob that lives up the block i don't know who the fuck that is and people think I fucking do and they give that to me as a valid means of locating shit and I'm like I don't fucking know Jilly Bo Bim blah 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 so don't do that make sure you have the numerics of where you're at or you say you know at the intersection of Jigawagaville and Moogabagaville you know lane whatever and just be able to tell them the exact location that's the first thing we ask and then I ask what's going on now I'm gonna get into don't tell me the whole story then just tell me oh so-and-so and so-and-so are fighting. Or uh, my mom's having a heart attack. Or I'm a diabetic and my blood sugar's dropping. Something like that. <clears throat> we'll get into the full nature of the story and everything after that. But I need to get that in. Because once I have the address and once I have what's going on, people are fighting, you need an ambulance or whatever, then the other people in the room, my partners, my co-workers, whoever's radio that is... Um, design like if it's in one of the cities and that city's radio guy will start dispatching the units calling ems getting them started getting the fire department started the other people in the room do that all of our computers are synced up together so what i put into my cad card pops up in their cad card for them to be able to read it so me asking you these questions is not delaying people getting started towards you in any way a lot of people think that it is it thinks that that's delaying the ambulance getting to there and they want me to get off the phone so I can do it and that's what I try to explain to them 
I have other people helping me, but I need to get this information so we can give them the updated information while they're in route. Like if somebody's, like if two people are fighting, we need to know if they're intoxicated, if they're on drugs or something else. Because if they're on meth, then, you know, if the officers have to tase them or something, that might not work. They need to know that, or they need to know, you know, why they're acting crazy. We need to know if they have a knife or a gun or if they're beating each other with sticks or whatever else. And we need to know their names and... And then that's when we get your name and your phone number in case we get disconnected, we can call you back because yes, we have caller ID, but sometimes the number that you're calling from is not the number you would want us to call back. We get that a lot where people call from their home phones, but then they're gonna go outside to whatever's happening and they're gonna have their cell phone with them. So if I call the home phone, ain't nobody gonna fucking answer because nobody's in the fucking house. So I need to call the cell phone. So we'll ask you for that number to get that. I don't know how many people's like, don't you go fucking color ID? And I'm like, <laughs> it's 2019, of course I fucking do, you dumb shit. But I can't fucking say that because I'll lose my job. So I just say, yes, sir, we do. I'm just making sure that that's the correct number that I need to call back. And mentally in my head, I'm going, fuck you! But anyway, that's beside the point. <clears throat> we, we get a lot of the same jokes over and over again from people. It's, it's fucking maddening. But anyway, um, so that's what, so don't, you know, don't rush and everything. So we get, we get all that straightened out, what's going on and everything, and they get the officers out there. And then depending on the call, if it's something that's, you know, somebody's breaking into your house or um, I'm having to give you CPR instructions or something like that, I'm going to stay on the line with you until the fire department, police officers, EMS, whoever, uh, get to you. So I can keep giving you instructions and I can keep them updated on what they're about to go into. Like, you know, uh, there's a lot of times I'll stay on and be able to tell the officers, you know, oh, the suspect's taken off running down Indiana Avenue. Um, they saw him turn left on the Oak Street. And so the officer then maneuvers himself to where he's coming up Oak Street, going to the address, and they run right into him. Um, that's happened a lot. I've been able to catch people from assault calls and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, well, I think I'm going to end this part here. This video is going a little bit longer than uh, I intended it to. But uh, so that's just uh, that's some more of the behind the scenes questions and stuff y'all have. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you have any more. I'd love to answer um, any of y'all's questions. Uh, somebody else had asked if, uh, if I've ever gotten drunk or done anything on the job. Uh, <laughs> I don't drink because um, I have a I have problems with my liver. And uh, I just don't, I, I never really been a big fan of alcohol anyway, so I don't, uh, I might have a beer every now and then, but uh, I've never been intoxicated on anything uh, while I've been at work. Uh, I don't believe, I don't believe in doing that. Like, I, I've got people's lives in my hand. I can't be, I need to be at my best. Uh, the only drugs I ever usually take when I'm at work is caffeine. I take a lot of fucking caffeine. I drink a lot of fucking coffee. I drink a lot of fucking monster. But can anything stay away because I always work third shift. But uh, and then I got some other questions that I'm going to make a uh, part three here soon. I'll go over all those and that. I believe some more because uh, if you guys like this series, keep having questions and everything, I like to keep it going along with my 911 EMT stories. Please check that out. I'm making a playlist to put all these into so they're easy to find for you guys. And uh, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Please subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for sticking this long in the video. Uh, you guys are you guys are amazing. Uh, I, I love doing these and talking to you guys and, and telling you guys about this stuff and everything. This is this is awesome. But I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Please leave a like, comment, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, ring that little dingling bell up there so you can get notified of all my bullshit. You guys remember, you're goddamn bloody legends. Love you guys. Peace.